Hello everyone. The extended lockdown in the UK has had me thinking about how we use fragrances. In particular, lots of people have, at least in the UK, been locked down in shared flats or shared houses. This means that people have been, you know, in very close proximity to each other for an extended period of time. Now, this I think is particularly difficult for perfume lovers and especially people who like to go out and wear large statement fragrances because wearing such things at home in these very confined environments is is potentially going to be quite problematic and, and wearing on the people who, who we live with and also there are a few fragrances which are quite prone to cause headaches. In, in, in fact, um, about 30% of people have some sort of adverse reaction to fragrances. So what I thought I'd do is I'd look for a number of alternatives to particularly some big name and big brand fragrances. And, and, and here I'm thinking about alternative formulations and in particular uh, other beauty products by the same house under the same brand. So I've, I've looked at a whole range of um, body lotions, uh, hydrating body lotions, hand creams, uh, face creams and, and the like. So I want to talk about these and talk about them from the perspective of people who know the perfume version of the, the scent of holding here, the, the number five, so this is what I'm going to start talking about. So, for people who know the classic smell of number five, first of all, this isn't really in a hierarchical sense. I'm not hierarchical, hierarchical about fragrance. I do not think that the pure parfum version of something is, is by definition better than the eau de toilette or even the, the body lotion. To me, it doesn't matter at a personal level. What matters is, do you like something? And if you like it, that's the best for you. However, uh, people may or probably have greater familiarity with the parfum version. So that's what I want to talk about in relationship to. So the, the, the lotions in relationship to those. So I've got a whole range of the things just underneath me here on, on the desk, everything from cost to some Galan uh, to lots of Chanel. So, so let's start with with the Chanel, the sort of the the um, the, the, the mountain of, of perfumes, as it, as it were, Chanel number no. five. And I've got a, a dinky little Chanel uh, number no. five pure parfum in the the classic whiskey bottle inspired um, perfume bottle. So number five rightly is a, a classic of perfumery uh, you know created was it you know uh, 1919 1920 launched I think um, as a gift Christmas 1921. Uh, the 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 very distinctive thing about number five is that it was one of the first first perfumes to really bring aldehydes to the fore. It was certainly the, the first massively popular perfume to use aldehydes. And it does so in a very distinctive mix. It's been reformulated many times over the years, but it, it still has a very certain character to it. And it's not just the aldehyde, so the ins one of the inspirations be behind it is said to be uh, Coco Chanel's uh, love of the smell of clean skin, which came from um, her childhood up upbringing um, in um, a sort of convent school, I believe. So, number five, the, the, the pure parfum. Uh, I have number five, the the, the uh, uh, emotion corpse that the, the the body lotion here and the interesting thing about the body lotion which is both good and bad is 
that I think this, whilst clearly not being identical, does carry with it that very distinctive character of number five. If somebody smells this on you, they will, and they know number five, they will know that it is number five or a number five inspired um, fragrance. Now the difficulty with that is that number five is also one of the most triggering perfumes. S the people who don't like it tend to hate it. A lot of people say that it gives them headaches. Now I've not tested this on the headache scale, um, but certainly if you're in with housemates where they'd prefer you wear it when you go out, wearing wearing this, the, 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 the body lotion, is is not going to help. I think they're just going to dislike this. Uh, so, if you're not in that situation, um, then it, it really is a, a very good uh, alternative. If you like, if you like the smell, just just go for this. I'm going to stick with Chanel um, for the moment and move through the years a bit and all the way to Coco Chanel launched in 1984 of course another historic say this is probably the the the, the second i'd say historic perfume um for chanel it sort of defined the modern era of chanel it was the first to be launched after coco chanel's death it was the first to be launched when karl lagerfeld became the creative director of chanel in 1983 the year before um and it is, you know, an, an, an absolutely fascinating um, smell. This is this is the the other parfum that I have here. Oh, no. actually, I've got my number five in there. My co ah, right. Put my red number five in my Coco Chanel box. That's naughty. That's my Coco Chanel, the the other parfum. Beautiful. I I do love Coco, and. Carrying on the sort the, the 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 theme of black, and I always I always find it interesting that sh number five is always always branded white. Um, Coco has black in in a lot of the branding. Here, this is this is a, a different proposition. T to me, the um, the hydrating body lotion. I mean, yes, it, it it's in the Coco area but i find this is it's got quite a distinctly different uh character to it uh, the fact that it's a lotion those those more soapy and i think um sort of artificial flowery notes are are, are much more prominent in, in this so if you are a cocoa lover i am not sure that this is going to do it for you Next coming relatively up to date, um, Gabrielle, and uh, this is the Gabrielle Essence. Um, I have Gabrielle. I have a sample of Gabrielle here somewhere. Well, not sure what, where. Um, the the Essence is the more amped up version. Um, yeah, slightly different in in in, in character, um, but it contains all the sort of the same. Um, uh, core heart notes. Um, I've got Essence, I've got the full bottle of Essence because I don't really like Gabrielle. Um, I find it so middle of the road and so lacking in any distinctive Chanel character um, that I've just I've just never really liked it. Um, it's it, it's pleasant, um, it's a very mass market scent. It was launched in 2017 which is a very interesting year four perfumes because there were three blockbusters that came out that that year there was Gabrielle by Chanel there was Mongolan which is here somewhere Mongolan and Twilly Twilly de Mez from the Mez uh, and all kind of interestingly mass market blockbuster perfumes and interesting in in in, in different ways um, in the way that the different houses try to um, um, launch themselves into very, very big mass market campaigns. Having said all that, many people do like Gabrielle and 
I think that this is the again the emulsion hydrate pour de coup, uh, moisturizer body lotion uh, captures it it's I mean there's nothing wrong with Gabrielle it's it's a very pretty fragrance and I think this captures that prettiness um, perfectly really so I'd say if if you're a general lover of of, of the Chanel uh, feel and you are in this circumstance where you're living with people um, who might not want you to wear the full full parfum then um, or you just want the everyday scent maybe you know before bed or something like that uh, then my top pick really is the, the the Gabrielle lotion I think it's quite lovely so I'm going to do a few more of these on different brands I've got to I've got to say the whole range here the the the, the, the Mont Galan got uh, others by Galan got got Shalimar um, also some interesting things from um, um, L'Occitane um, have released um, both perfume and uh, um, body lotion um, versions of things and we can't f forget of course Angel by Moodler. <laughs> 